Hey guys, it looks like Russia came closer than ever before during its genocidal invasion of Ukraine to triggering Article 5 of NATO. Specifically, this morning, Prime Minister of Greece, a NATO member, Mitsotakis and President Zelensky of Ukraine were visiting the site of a prior Russian attack on an Odessa apartment building. You see, they're at the scene of one war crime, and then another one happens, but this time it was actually targeting Mitsotakis and Zelensky. Let's recap. About a week ago, Russia uh, bombed a Ukrainian apartment building, something it's done many times. You may remember the horrific pictures of a child dying in its mother's arms under the rubble. You may remember the rescue dog that was emotionally upset and had to take a rest. It was one of the worst attacks by virtue of the power of the pictures that came out of it during this war. Although, of course, there are many war crimes and many bad photographs to choose from because Russia commits war crimes against the Ukrainian people every single day. While they're there, Mitsotakis and Zelensky, to visit and commemorate and give uh, honor to the victims, Russia launched an Iskander M ballistic missile and it landed approximately 100 to 150 meters away from those two. If it had landed any closer, it's very likely Mitsotakis, the prime minister, the head of state of a NATO member would have been assassinated. Now, what is the Iskander M ballistic missile? Well, first, let me tell you a story about the Iskander M because I've been in an Iskander M strike. That's right, when I was in Izium as part of the Territorial Defense Forces, that is, it's one of the land forces, one of the infantry forces of the Ukrainian armed forces, I was asleep as two Iskander missiles landed in, on the Izium fire station. That's right, women, children, and first responders is what Russia targets. And it was about 10 seconds apart that those two missiles hit. Understand it's a 2,000 pound warhead. It is moving between five, Mach 5 and Mach 7, that is five to seven times the speed of sound. And it's a big, heavy missile, okay? Now, I'm laying there, I'm in my sleeping bag in a cot. I'm not gonna say how close, but it was of similar distance to what Zelensky and Mitsotakis were today. Obviously, if you're in an open area, blast can move more freely than if you're in an urban area, okay? So that's one, one big difference between the blast I experienced and the one that was in Odessa today. So I'm laying there. I think it's probably one o'clock in the morning. My AK-74 is sitting next to me. I'm in my box of briefs. I hear one boom, and I thought it was possibly a drone attack or a laser-guided bomb attack, uh, like a long-range guide bomb, on targets near me, which had may have had some military significance. And I thought, if there's a second explosion, third or fourth, whatever weapon it may be, I better get the hell out of this house. So I popped up, grabbed my rifle, screamed for my teammate to get, to get down. He was out just thinking, just like me. And we were outside in the, the front yard of this building in our underwear in a fighting position in literally like 10 seconds. And the second one hits. It was really loud and you could feel the compression wave come over the, over the top of you, okay? Um, they were targeting a fire station that had just received some new equipment in Izium, as if Izium hasn't suffered enough. It's been occupied twice. Uh, it has uh, numerous mass graves, but this is how Russia rolls. Uh, what is the, the accuracy level of this missile? Because, you know, people are going to try to say that they weren't possibly that, or Russia is going to deny that it was targeting the head of state of a NATO, NATO country. Well, it does have what's called a, a CEP, which is Circular error probable, which is basically the median accuracy. You measure like a round circle, you define the size of that circle, and the bomb or the missile or whatever weapon system it may be is gonna land within that a certain amount of time. It's basically the median accuracy of that weapon, assuming no manufacturing defects and things go as they're supposed to. For the Iskander missile, uh, ballistic missile, the Iskander M, which is what appears to what, have, uh, what's, what was used today, it says five to seven meters, okay? However, we know that Russian Guided weapons are notoriously unreliable. There was a U.S. Uh, Department of Defense estimate earlier in the war that approximately 30% of Russia's so-called smart weapons uh, had failures and basically turned uh, to, to dumb weapons, uh, if you will, uh, and had such a bad uh, error rate that sometimes those smart weapons were no more accurate than non-smart weapons. And so here, it's entirely possible that that Iskander M missile was in fact on target to hit Zelensky and to hit uh, Militakis. But what happened is because of manufacturing defect, um, you know, it was knocked off course. 
It's a pretty advanced missile system. It came out in 2006. Uh, there is both a domestic and a, um, an export variant. The domestic variant has a very significant range, I believe around 500 kilometers, perhaps. Uh, again, very high-speed missile. There's also a, a cruise missile version, I believe, and um, it's on a transporter erector launcher, so it's mobile. It's like, remember the Scud missiles in Iraq, how hard they were to find, even in a big open desert? Well, imagine a, a Scud missile with greater range, a bigger warhead, that is actually a smart weapon, assuming it works and it's not a manufacturing defect, which Russia struggles with a lot. Um, so this shows how brazen Russia is. And that's important for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're getting worse and worse to some degree as far as triggering uh, Article 5. And number two, they believe they could get away with this and that NATO would not stand up to them. And maybe NATO wouldn't trigger Article 5. Now, the good thing for Ukraine is that the Prime Minister of Greece was very shaken by this um, experience. I can tell you, if someone was a, a complete civilian, had never been in shelling or explosions before, it would definitely be really scary. I mean, it's loud. I remember when those missiles landed in Izium, it was like, boom! And then the second one was like, boom! I mean, it it felt like it could have been like a Shahid drone or like a small uh, laser-guided bomb that was landing very close. So even when this thing is 100, 150, 200 meters away, it sounds like a very close explosion because of, I mean, the kinetic energy of that would probably kill someone within 50 meters, even without a warhead, just from the concussion wave that would come out from that. Uh, it would, you know, probably give you a TBI at least. So to recap today, Russia almost had a FAFO, if you know what that means. I think it's good for Ukraine to, for, for another NATO member, uh, someone who's high up in a NATO member to, to be within the zone of danger, to feel what it's like, what Ukrainians go through every single day. Uh, let's hope this leads to, you know, further support for Russia's heroic defense. I'm sorry, Ukraine's heroic defense against Russia. Uh, have a great day. There'll be more updates. Please like and subscribe.